Hello class. I <clears throat> thought that I would do a lecture. Actually, I was going to do this lecture a little while ago, and then I thought, God, you know, I need some lunch. <laughs> so I had some lunch, and I'm back from lunch, and we are going to concentrate on a, a very good example. Uh, we, we've covered it theoretically, you know, and in deriving the equations and stuff like that. But let's actually put a, a delta y conversion um, example to the test. And so what I did was I, I drew up this circuit. I'm just going to put it up here because, oh boy, I had to get a pen. And then, that's not so bad, I guess. Uh, but let me see. I've got another one here. I can't remember. I, I can never remember which one. Uh, I've used it actually is working very good. Now, this is just going to be a 10 volt. Yeah, this one's working very good. It's going to be a 10 volt um, po DC power supply. And what I'm going to hitch it up to is just a, an, um, a current limiting input resistor. And I'm going to say that that input resistor is a 100 ohms, right? Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it through a little bridge here. And so this part of the circuit is going to have several uh, resistors that look like they're in parallel and several resistors that look like they're in series, right? Making it a circuit whereby it's going to be really impossible to figure out some of the currents and stuff without using our transform uh, one way or another. Now I'm gonna give you the actual uh, values because you know what I want to do is I want to um, treat this and that's 220 ohm resistor I had to put that sort of on the inside there and then this is going to be a 330 ohm resistor the center resistor is a 120 ohm resistor and then the two resistors uh, down here at the bottom one is 470 ohms and the other one is 390 ohms. And so you can see that the, I probably should have put that 220 on the outside here too. So 220, I'll put that out there rather than inside. Um, in fact, I'll uh, actually just white that out so that nobody thinks there's anything there. How about that? Right, so 220, 330, 470, and 390 on the bottom and then 100 ohm. <coughs> uh, Really, really, it's a current limiting uh, resistor. And so what we want to do is we know that this is going to be 10 volts, right? We want to find out what the voltage is here at, uh, what do I call it, A. We want to find out what the voltage is here. But we also want to find out what the voltage is at these two intermediate places here, one of which I'm going to call P and one of which I'm going to call Q. Right, and then we know that down here we're grounded. So we're gonna say that that's V equals zero. This is 10 volts up here. So it's all gonna be referenced to uh, the bottom of the DC power supply being grounded. <clears throat> and so we wanna find out what P and Q are because we've gotta find out how much current is flowing through that 120 ohm resistor, right? I could put re ohms here, ohms, there we go. Uh, I can't put one up there. So, <clears throat> uh, you know, how are we going to solve this problem to figure out what the voltages are at P? And that, I'm going to write that down here. So we want to find out what the voltages are at P. We want to find out what the voltage is at Q. We want to find out what the voltage is at A. And as far as the currents go, we want to find out what the current is through the 220 ohm resistor. We want to find out what the current is through the 330 ohm resistor. Uh, and we want to find out what the current is through the 120 ohm resistor right in the center. And we can do that if we find out what P and Q are. And you know, in our analysis of the circuit, because we're going to use a, a delta Y conversion. <coughs> Excuse me, yeah, I've been on a couple lectures today, so um, 
my throat's getting a, a little hoarse. In an interactive class, I would have you guys answering questions, so it would give my voice a little rest, but uh, I did have lunch, so that should be a rest enough. <laughs> so we want to find those things out, and really in this circuit, there's no way that we can do this unless we introduce a conversion from that, that delta. Now, I could choose either the top delta or the bottom delta. <clears throat> But what I've done is I've taken this delta here, right? I'm gonna take this delta here, and I'm going to replace that delta with a T. So let me redraw the circuit down here. Won't be you know, much difference. I'm still gonna have the 10 volts coming out. I'm still gonna have my input resistor, but now, when I go over here, although I will still have the 220 ohm and the 230 ohm resistor, or the 330 ohm resistor and the 220 ohm resistor, I'm going to replace that bottom part with the T, right? So this is what I've got now as far as my circuit goes. Does everyone see that? I hope that I am still, uh, yep, no, I see that I've got uh, microphone stuff on there. So I basically replaced this part up here that was the delta with this part down here, right? And let's not forget where our uh, one, two, and three um, resistors are. One, two, three. Right, just like uh, clockwork, one, two, three, A, B, C. So <clears throat> if we were looking at the delta uh, up here, we would say that R sub A, right, R sub A is gonna be the 390 ohm resistor. R sub B is going to be the 470 ohm resistor. And then R sub C, will be the 120 ohm resistor. Does everybody see that? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, at least I'm not in class spreading COVID-19 all over the place. So, you know, count your blessings. So when we go to R1, R1 is gonna be R sub C. So let me just write this down, R1, is R sub C times R sub B divided by R sub A plus R sub B plus R sub C, right? And so we can do that. We, we, we know what, we wanna find out what R1 is in the replacement. And so let's just pop in uh, the numbers that we've, we've got there. We know that R sub C is 120 ohms and we know that R sub B is going to be 470 ohms. So 120 ohms times 470 ohms. And then let's just add all of those up. So 390 plus 470, that gives me 880. Uh, wait a second. Is that <laughs> seven? No, uh, that gives me <laughs> 860. 860 plus 20 is 880, plus 100 is 980. 980 ohms. And of course, we're gonna be using that for the other ones. I don't have to go through that all over again. <clears throat> Everybody uh, sees you know, what, uh, where I got the 980 from. So 120 times 470 divided by 980 gives me 57.6 ohms. All right, so one is going to be, R sub one is going to be 57.6 ohms. Let's do R sub two. R sub two, and you know, I could put that, uh, and, and I, of course, have drawn this before, and I'm sure that you've got uh, it in your notes, uh, and you probably have already drawn it down on, a sheet so that you'll always have it uh, ready for when you go and work at National Grid. One, two, four, 
three, right? And A, B, C, and one, two, trying to find a space to put them in there, three. That's a three. One, two, three. So I've drawn it, I drawn it smaller each time, but you probably have it sort of more or less committed to memory as to how we go around there. So now what I want to do is I want to find R2. And so that's going to be R sub C times R sub A. R sub C times R sub A. We'll just use, uh, you know, right off here, divided by R sub A plus R sub B plus R sub C, right? And so that's how we remember it. And of course, uh, R sub C is my 120 ohms times R sub A, which is my 390 ohms divided by the 980 ohms of the summation of all three of the resistors. And what I get is 47.76 ohms. Right? <clears throat> so R1 and R2, we figure those out. Uh, this one is uh, 57.6 ohms. Number two is 47. Point, let's say eight ohms, right? And then number three, which I'll just uh, put down here, R3, and by process of elimination, because we're just looking up here, or we're looking down here again at, at R3, we've got B and A. So I've got R sub A times R sub B, all divided by R sub A plus R sub B plus R sub C. I probably didn't have to write that three times, but <clears throat> no problem. Uh, so now I've got 390 ohms, right, times 470 ohms, all divided by nine, 980 ohms. And that gives me my last one. And you can see 390 and 470 are a heck of a lot more than 120 because we got 120 times both of those each time. This is like more than three times as great. So we'd expect something that's around three times as great. And what we get is 187 ohms. Right? So R sub three is 187 ohms. <clears throat> and then of course this one still appears a 100 ohm resistor. So we can easily figure out what the total resistance for that circuit is. Right, because everybody, can everybody see that now that we've got, we've just got this pretty much parallel here. We've got these two parallel uh, lines that are coming up to that T, and then we've got this that's 187 uh, ohms that's in series with that. So to find out the total resistance, we have 100 ohms. That's the input current limiting resistor. And then we want to add to that. Now, <clears throat> we've got to look at the two parallel pathways that the current is coming down. Right, we've got we've got this pathway here to get to that node, and we have this pathway here to get to that node. Two series pathways, or two parallel pathways that are both series resistances in those pathways. So, let's look at this first. We're going to multiply the two of them. So I'm just going to put uh, things up here so that we can we can actually add these up. So we're going to have 220 plus 57.6, so that's 277.6 ohms, right? Times, now let's look at the other side, 330 plus 47.76 gives me 377.8. Okay, so we multiplied those two together, right? But don't we have to also divide them, right? We multiplied them together, but now we have to divide them by the sum, 
of those two being added together. And in fact, I, I know what the sum uh, of those two are. I have it written down here someplace. It is 655. 0.3 ohms. I think that was from, uh, you know, an earlier uh, thing that I did. But we also have to add on that 187 ohms as well, don't we? So <clears throat> we've got 100, we've got 187, that gives us 287. And then what we're really looking for now is what is, uh, the the difference um, in uh, in here. So uh, let's just uh, uh, do that. So just a second. I just want to. We got the one eighty seven and the one hundred. That's the easy part. So two seventy seven point six times three seventy seven point eight divided by six fifty five point three gives me one hundred and sixty point oh four. So I'm going to say that this approximately equals 160. All right, so 100 plus 160, that's 260, 360, 447. All right, does everybody see that? So our total is going to be 447. That's what the power supply sees, and that is what's going to dictate the actual uh, current that's flowing out of the power supply into the circuit. Let's call that capital I, right? So if I wanna find out capital I, I'm gonna put it in blue. I'm gonna circle it in blue too. If I wanted to find out capital I, I have the voltage, oh, did I forget to give you the 10 volts there? Sorry, that the power supply there is, oh no, I gave it to you up here, 10 volts. I just forgot to rewrite it down here. So 10 volts divided by the total current or the equivalent current that the power supply sees with the whole circuit. And I'm dealing with this circuit because there's no way that I could figure it out for this circuit, could I? That's right, there's no way. I could figure it out. I mean, not with the tools that you have anyway. And, uh, and so down here, I put this conversion in. And now I've got everything that I, I need to, to figure it out. And 10 volts divided by 447 ohms gives me the current that's flowing through there, which is 22.37 milliamps, right? So we know that the total current that's flowing through there, let's actually put that in there, I total, right? So I total is also gonna be in there and uh, that's what we've got. So we've got our total was the 447 and then we found out what I total was. So there is our equivalent or our total, uh, they go, go under different names. Our total is usually when we talk about the total equivalent resistance for the whole circuit, whereas our equivalent could just, you know, give us the equivalent resistance to replace these two parallel pathways here uh, with a single resistor. So <clears throat> equivalent is a subset really of, of the total. All right. Now we've got the current and we know the current flowing through the 100 ohm resistor. So we can find out what the voltage drop is across that 100 ohm resistor. That's just going to be 0 0.02237 amps. Notice how I've gone back to using combination of primary units instead of milliamps uh, where I described it over here. When you use it in calculations, I always want to go back to the primary unit or the combination of primary units that describe the, the unit that you're working with. All right, always do that. Now the voltage drop across that 100 ohm resistor is the current through it times the resistance. And so we see that the voltage drop across there is going to be 2.237 volts, right? 
Now that also tells us um, what the voltage is at A, right? Voltage at A equals 10 volts minus 2.237 volts. I actually don't think I threw that seven in there when I uh, did it the, the last time. I may have rounded it, but let me give you the exact uh, figure there. Two minus 2.237 gives me 7.763, 7.763 volts at A, right? So there you go. We now know what the voltage is at A. And we know the we could never have done it with this. I mean, with the knowledge that you have, there are other ways of network analysis that we could have done it. But, but doing it this way, and of course, we're talking about delta Y conversion. So why wouldn't we be doing it this way? Shows you how you can just switch that around. And a lot of times you have to do this with power things where you can't, uh, you know, can't really change things around. So there you go. Um, Voltage at A is 7.763 volts. What we want to do now is we want to find out what the um, voltage is at P and at Q, right? Because that is going to allow us to figure out what the current flow is across there. Now, you're probably saying, well, that, that shouldn't be too much of a problem because all we want to do is find out what the current is flowing through here and what the current is flowing through here, right? And we, we'll, and, and we know what the current is flowing through that bottom resistor in our equivalent um, circuit, don't we? So we know what the current is, because that's I. I'm just gonna use my blue pen again. That is I, isn't it? Isn't that the same current that is going into the power supply is the, current that's uh, flowing across there. So theoretically, we, we could find out what the voltage is there, but does that really matter? Because there is, no, there is no node there in the real circuit. There's no node there in the real circuit. And this is the circuit we're analyzing, remember. This is the circuit we're analyzing. But we're using this circuit so that we can find out what P and Q are, because P and Q here are gonna be the same voltage as P and Q are up in the original circuit, right? Right, so I'm gonna just answer that for myself. Now I'm answering my own questions in my <laughs> video lectures. Yes, uh, that was rhetorical, uh, yes. All right, so we've got that there. We still have to figure out how much current is flowing through the 220 ohm resistor and the 330 ohm resistor. And here, I'm gonna show you how you would do that, right? Using the inverse lever rule. So if I wanna find out how much current is flowing through the 220 ohm resistor, I take the total amount of current that's flowing through that uh, circuit, 22.37 milliamps. And I'm just going to apply the same current divider rule that I uh, had before. You go to the inverse lever rule, right? You go to the opposite side. So I want to find out that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out this, 330 plus 47.8. 330 plus 47.8 is 377.8. So 377.8 ohms. And everybody's saying, hey, why are you going to the opposite side? I, I, I thought we were trying to find out what the current was flowing through the 220. That's right, I am. That's why it's called the inverse lever rule, right? I'm on the opposite side and I'm taking the 330 plus the 47 and that's gonna tell me what's flowing through here. All right, so it's 377.8, that's the opposite side divided by the total. So that's 377.8 plus 277.6, right? If I add those together, that gives me 655.3 ohms. And that tells me how much current is flowing through that 220 ohm resistor. And it turns out to be 12.89 milliamps. So that's through the 220. Now, I'll put a box around that. 
Now, how much current is flowing through the 330? Well, by process of elimination, let's just do that. 22.37 milliamps minus 12.89 milliamps. Right, because current, current can't just be made out of thin air. I mean, it has to come from somewhere and go somewhere. So if I've got 22.37 milliamps coming in there, it's got to bifurcate and go in one of the two directions. Well, if I know one of the directions is 12.89, by process of elimination, uh, I can say that 22.37 minus 12.89 is going to give me 9.48 milliamps that's what's left over right that has to be going down the other side the 330 side so there you go now why don't we find out what v sub p is right v sub p is going to be v sub a we know v sub a 7.763 volts minus the current that's flowing through the 220 ohm resistor times the resistance. So the current that's flowing through the 220 ohm resistor is going to be 0 0.01289 amps, right, times 220 ohms. So that tells me right there that I'm going to have uh, V sub P is four, I'll let you do the actual calculations yourself, 4.92 volts. So that's V sub P. How about V sub Q? Well, V sub Q, I think I can still get this in, is going to be the 7.763 volts minus, now we got to use the other one, which is 0 0.00948 amps, right, times 330 ohms, and that is going to give me 4.635 volts. There you go. So now using the method, the conversion method that I used here, We've now found what V sub P and V sub uh, Q are, right? So we know that V sub P is going to be equal to 4.92 volts. And we know that V sub Q is 4.635 volts. Now, what does that really tell us? That tells us the direction of current flow, doesn't it? In the 120 ohm resistor right? If V sub P is at a higher voltage than V sub Q, then I'm going to have current flow going that way in that 120 ohm resistor, aren't I? That's right. Because I now know that P is at a higher voltage than Q, so I know that the current's going to flow through that other way. And as a matter of fact, we could figure out what that current in the 200 and um, in the 120 uh, uh, own thing is I'll do it in uh, red so you can still see it. That's just going to be the voltage differential. So that's just going to be 4.92 minus 4.635. Boy, that's not a good idea doing it in red. Hey, uh, divided, <laughs> divided by 120 uh, ohms. Right, and so if we do that, what we end up getting is that I in the, did I put two, that, that's 120. I in the 120 ohm resistor turns out to be 2.433 milliamps. And going left to right, all right? So there you go, and we've, we can figure out a lot of other things too, but that's the way that we're gonna use that. Now, the next lecture is going to be on um, nodal, right? Uh, uh, mesh analysis, or I shouldn't say mesh, but uh, uh, analysis, methods of analysis. And we're going to be using a little higher order uh, 
mathematics, matrices, uh, simultaneous equations, stuff like that, to figure out using nodal, the nodal and the mesh approach to figure out uh, uh, different voltages and currents and uh, you know, power being used by, by circuits. You know, different way and a, a deeper, more complex way of analyzing circuits. Okay, see you there.